Hey, it's me, Tyler MV, and you're listening to the Game Savvy Podcast, where we talk about playing games, making games, and gaming news, and whatever else we decide to get into. Today on the podcast, I had the pleasure of sitting down with Mike and Jan from Breakfall, the creators of the hit game Starwall, and they sat down to talk about their newest game, Pizza Titan Ultra. Now, I've had the pleasure of playing Pizza Titan Ultra at both the Capital Gaming Expo here in Ottawa and at Comic-Con, and it is a ton of fun. So if you don't know, you're in this mech unit that has to deliver pizzas around town as fast as possible, and of course, you can imagine you cause the most destruction as possible from getting A to B. Mike and Yan talk about a little bit about the development process, their artistic direction with their games, and kind of their philosophy on what people should get out of playing games. They also talk about the success of Starwall, what's next for Pizza Titan Ultra, as well as they share some failures and pitfalls uh, and some things to watch out for when you decide to make your own game. You can find out more about the game at pizzatitanultra.com or follow the Breakfall team at breakfall.ca. And if you happen to like the podcast, I would absolutely appreciate your five-star review. That would be amazing. Without further ado, here is my sit-down with the guys at Breakfall. Have you seen the second? Yeah, I have. Yeah? It was pretty I, good. It wasn't as good as the first one, but I like that they touched on like personal stories from each character. Yeah, that part really worked for me, to be honest. I think, yeah. I, think I don't know, in that respect, I liked it more than the first. No yeah. spoilers. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, sorry, yeah, no spoilers, but... Uh, I tried to convince her to go see it the other night, but yeah. See, so, yeah, I think that's pretty good. Check, check, mic check, check. Cool. So are you guys okay to start then? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. So welcome listeners to the Game Savvy Podcast. My name is Tyler mccauley Valier, and today I'm sitting down with the makers of Starwall. We've got Mike and Jan from Breakfall here to talk about their newest game, Pizza Titan Ultra, as well as whatever shenanigans we decide to get into. So how about we start with introducing yourselves, what you do at Breakfall, and state your favorite game of all time. We'll start with you, Mike. Oh, okay. Uh, favorite game of all time is going to be tricky, but uh, yeah, I'm uh, Mike Keo. Uh, in addition to being a co-founder of Breakfall, I also do a um, lot of... Uh, game design. Uh, my background originally in this industry is audio, so oh, nice. uh, all the music and sound effects, um, and a bit of writing, and I'm uh, currently operating as the producer on our next project. But for Starwall, it was mostly audio and building a, a few of the levels. Cool. Uh, my name is uh, Jan Kozlowski, and I'm also co-founder of Breakfall. Um, uh, mostly do uh, design. Um, I have a bit of a background in graphic design, so I've kind of always done that on the side. Uh, as far as work-related experience, uh, done a little bit of everything, uh, including design, uh, level design, uh, and and even some programming. I used to work for for the government doing some uh, automated testing, and I've even done some uh, customer support at at oh, nice. So kind of all around uh, tech guy, I guess. Mm. Cool. Thank you so much. Oh, you guys ready to order? Uh, actually, can I get a half to ten? Half to ten, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yep. Good. Yeah. I'll, I'll do. It. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No, Please. you go ahead. Uh, I'll get a full poutine. Sounds good. <laughs> Very easy. And uh, I will get uh, honey garlic wings. Honey garlic. Yeah. Pounds. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Any cheese or sour cream? Uh, sour cream. Sour cream. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Thank you so much. Cool, so thank you so much for being here. Uh, really appreciated by both me and the listeners. Uh, I'd also like to extend a big thank you to Moose McGuire's for hosting us here on McCarthy Road. Uh, they've graciously decided to uh, host us on Wing Night, which is one of their busiest nights, and the wings here are, like, delicious, so highly recommend it. Um, so I'm sure you guys are both super busy and hard at work making games, but what are you, what games are you guys currently playing right now? Uh, lately, I've actually gotten randomly with some friends into Terraria, uh, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah I, I jumped into that, uh, renting a server, and uh, that's pretty awesome. I, I got kind of burnt out on Minecraft, finally canceled my Realm subscription. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, I design levels by day and then build things in video games anyways <laughs> by night. That's um, awesome. Yeah, so, uh, and then, uh, you know, anything I can get for my Switch. So I just finished Breath of the Wild, was excellent. And you're so lucky, because like, I've been looking for a Switch since it came out. Everywhere I go is sold out, and I'm, yeah. just, I'm getting mad at the... At the uh, uh, cashiers now. I'm They're like... hard to find. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Um, yeah. So I, I finished Breath of the Wild and, and Mario Kart Eight. I got again. Oh, nice. Yes. I'm, I'm a big Mario Kart fan. That's too, awesome. So. Yeah. Cool. Um, 
Yeah, for me, still finishing up Zelda. Uh, I've been a little bit slower than the other guys. Um, and between that, the, the kind of mainstay for me has actually not even been a video game, but I play a lot of Magic the Gathering. So yeah, I do I, too, I go yeah. out to like the weekly tournaments uh, at my at my local stores, and uh, I've still been doing that. We're actually going down uh, this weekend to the, they have this event, Grand Prix Montreal, where there's going to be like one to two thousand people just oh, that's playing amazing. Magic. Wow. So yeah, that's, that's our weekend plan. And uh, and one that I've actually found myself playing a lot is uh, Yu-Gi-Oh on the phone, Yu-Gi-Oh <laughs> Duel Links. Uh, that's amazing. It was a game that I always just thought was a ripoff of Magic, but yeah. uh, I've come to really like it on the phone. And like the presentation is just amazing. Like the music is really good, and they're all just yelling at each other the whole time, yeah. talking about summoning things in attack position. <laughs> it's, it's just fun. It, it's kind of been my my little filler game yeah. in between uh, Zelda sessions oh, and awesome. playing Magic. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I know the creators came out and said that Yu-Gi-Oh was based off Magic the Gathering, so like, you're not far off on oh, that. Oh, I actually yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, they actually came out and said that, and I'm pretty sure so is uh, that World of Warcraft game, the card game or whatever. Hearthstone. Hearthstone. Yeah, they yeah. have a lot of elements from Magic the Gathering, yeah. too. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah. So I cool. that one, too. So how long have you guys been working on games, and what got you into game development in the first place? Um, wow. Uh, it's uh, over a decade. I mean, I, I, I teamed up with some friends. I wrote some music for, for I guess, the first project I did was uh, around 2000. Um, so I, uh, I my, my two big loves are really games and music. Nice. Um, so I, I remember the moment when I'd, I'd taken, I'd gotten so far in my piano lessons, um, and then one day uh, my teacher started teaching me just, just enough theory that I'm like, okay, I sort of get how chords work and how this stuff yeah. comes together. Uh, and I figured out how to play Mining Melancholy from Donkey Kong Country 2. Oh, nice. And I'm like, I, I love this I love this game music. And, you know, that's that's not, I mean, the, that's a, a, a sacred score for me. Like, that game soundtrack is, I was listening to it even today. Um, but, you know, I, I feel like I could write things like that, if not a, up to David Wise's yeah. level. Yeah. Um, so I always wanted to, to do soundtracks for games, specifically. Um and then got more and more into games. I, I sort of got a, got lucky, got an audio job in town, and then started getting more and more involved in the design and building and just all the other parts of, of game development that I could. Uh, and then sort of started on with Breakfall as a hobby side project, and we kind of went from there. Um, we made Marvin's Mittens, which uh, I'm still very proud of, and Starwall was uh, a little bit of a bigger game for us. Yeah. So that's, that's what led us to uh, three full-time members at Breakfall right now. So. That's so great because I actually started out in music too. I used to be in a nice. metal band. I was like the oh, lead nice. streamer. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, but like I, I did other things or whatever. I even took music industry arts at Algonquin. Very cool. And yeah. like for audio engineering and stuff. I forget everything from it. But <laughs> I do come from a music background too. And it wasn't right. until like maybe three months ago that I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a game. Like screw it. I'm just going to make, make my own game. Nice. Signed up for some Udemy courses the next day. So I've been like coding my own stuff. So it's kind of funny. And it's weird too because like before, right before this interview, I was thinking I never ask about like the sound design in games because mm. I never talked to the sound designers or okay. people do any kind of sounds. So I find this like a really underrated thing when it comes to video games, especially yeah. like when you think of like amazing soundtracks, like what comes to mind is like Bastion. I don't know if you guys have remember mm. Bastion. Yeah. Yep. Right. Um, Stardew Valley just came out and it has like an amazing soundtrack and that you okay. can find it on Spotify too. So nice. that's great that you have wow. that background. So that's awesome. Cool. And so, um, yeah, for me, um, I guess, yeah, I don't know, always loved games. Um, to be honest, like, yeah, in high school, <laughs> I, I think my first kind of way of working in games, or not even working in games, but like kind of messing with them was uh, I was huge into DDR, Dance Dance Revolution, back oh, in high nice. school. Yeah. Uh, and we had this program that we downloaded called PWI or Step Mania, and you can make steps to your own songs. So I would find MP3s and I would just make no way. these random DDR songs to play on my keyboard and eventually like a dance pad. That's kind um, of amazing. And like I, I think for a long time I, I didn't know that making games was a thing you could do. Like it was just always kind of alienated. Uh, like I never knew how people got into that. Um, but I did some graphic design at Algonquin and didn't finish the program, wasn't exactly for me, but then yeah. at that time they had the game development program at Algonquin uh, and I was like, oh wow, this is actually a thing you can take to, to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, the program itself, itself didn't quite uh, get everybody there uh, on the same level, but, uh, but at, at the end of our open house that time I met these guys, uh, they were looking for somebody to help work on Marvin's Mittens. and. And from then on, we had uh, weekend meetings. We would just all get together at our buddy Jason's apartment, and everybody bringing their computer over, yeah. and we would just make a game. It was kind of like you know, kind of like a LAN party, but yeah, game dev. And that's, that's kind of the dream. Basically, so like, get a get a group of people you love yeah. together and just make something that you uh, yeah. love. So, so yeah. yeah, we did that basically every weekend for like four or five years to actually finish the game. But um, yeah, as Mike was saying, he's 
like he worked in the industry, but at the time uh, none of us did. So yeah. like, a lot of us kind of learned by making that game. Like mm-hmm. uh, there, most of us didn't really know anything. Just a bunch of new grads, and, and Jason himself uh, kind of taught himself how to do game programming and things like that. Um, so Jason's guess, story is my is my favorite. I guess that was just before you joined. I don't, I don't know. I'm sure I've said this before. Is he was doing he was doing web development, and he we had talked in the past. Like uh, I went to elementary school with Jason. I, I knew Jason Jay forever. Um, but uh, I I feel like my perspective is he just kind of woke up one day as like. Yeah, I don't want to do websites anymore. I just want to make a game, <laughs> and, and he went. He just attacked that so hard, like, and That's built. So we built funny. our own engine, like a C sharp of the XNA yeah. system for for Xbox Live Arcade was what we were originally making a game for. Never even released there. Kind of missed the mark, but yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, no. Jason really just went went hard after game yeah. development. Like, yeah, he just so one funny. Day the same same thing happened to me because yeah. my background's marketing. I worked at a marketing mm-hmm. agency, nice. okay. and then I had an idea for a game. I read this like real life story, and I was like, if I can if I could make that kind of more creepy um, and turn it into a video game, that'd be like the greatest game of all time. Right. I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna make the game, even if it takes me ten years. Yeah, that's ten years of learning and failing and keeping going and stuff. So. That's so funny that he just like woke up and he's like, I'm going to make games. That's exactly what I did. Yeah, so, yeah. he had the thought before, but it, I felt like there was just this this pivotal, like, no, I'm doing it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Kind of, so oh, good. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that was, uh, and actually, yeah, one thing that, uh, that I did want to mention about that was that, like, in making that game, Marvin's Mint, it actually helped a bunch of us get into the industry. So, like, for me, um, through working on that and uh, getting good work from Mike, uh, he got us, uh, or he got me a job as a level designer at Artex Studios, which is now defunct, but uh, for a long time was actually the longest running game studio in Canada, is it, or North America? Yeah, even. Maybe even North America. It was like 25 years old, yeah. which to be a, a independent like developer at that point right. like, was was a big deal, yeah. Yeah, yeah so. and uh, even Jason as well, he got an industry job uh, through his work on Marvin, and uh, and even uh, Jobin as well, yeah. got a job in educational games by having that kind of portfolio piece of Marvin's Mitten, something that we had done on our spare time. Mm-hmm. What got you into level design specifically? Like, why'd you go level design? Uh, I think yeah, you know, it's just something that's always interested me. Um, I think it was also kind of a matter of like filling gaps, and I think also that was just <laughs> the position that was available at Artex yeah. at mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. I've read online um, that if you want to get into the industry, you pick like level design because everybody needs level designers. So I was just really wondering if yeah, that's the reason why you chose it, or if you, there was a game that you saw the levels in it, and you were like, I want to design levels like that, or uh, I don't know. I kind of like doing everything and especially in Marvin like we were all wearing a lot of hats so yeah at that time um, I was doing more coding so like I wrote like a particle system and I wrote like a character controller and animation system but I yeah. also made some levels made a bunch of art assets um, so it was kind of I think honestly it was kind of we were all wearing a lot of hats and all yeah. of us had to do a bit of everything okay cool yeah and so what's your favorite part about making games kind of a fluffy question but I always like to ask developers this uh, I think, uh, for me, I think it's just seeing the reactions of uh, people playing the game. So, like, every time we go to something like Comic-Con, it's, it's really rewarding to see people just have a smile on their face. Or, you know, if they notice something that you put in into the game, they're like, that's really cool. Then that feels really good. And I remember when we released Marvin's Bins, it didn't do very well financially. Uh, but uh, we gave a bunch of copies to this game form. I'm not sure if you know NeoGAF. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, like, uh, so they had this uh, indie dev thread that that Jason was pretty involved in. He got some advice from there and shared on there. So we kind of did a key giveaway uh, to people on NeoGAF. And, and I still remember when we did that and we shipped out the keys, we were just on the forum hitting F5, F5, F5. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and there were just all these amazing uh, comments saying that they loved it, that they looked and played like a storybook. And you had stories of people who like uh, got their entire family crowded around the computer, you know, something like, you know, parents playing with their kids. Mm-hmm. And it was just, it was so amazing to read all that. That felt amazing that's awesome yeah no i'm glad you don't answer first because yes the players <laughs> it's all about the players uh you know there's there, there are a lot of other points though that my my first instinct was to speak to uh you know solving these big uh design problems like when when something you know you have a few pieces on the table and they're not quite playing right um right here yeah thank you so much oh these wings look amazing thank you thank you um, so you know when things really come together, like you have these things and they they almost they're almost a game. It almost plays right, um, and then you you just layer in a few other details that really make it like come together and, and reward skill. And you know bad things happen if you play poorly. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other thing for for years and years and it's sort of related to that is when you take 
you know, when, when you do your job and, and add it to other people's. Um, so for a long time for me, that was audio, but it's, it's, it's amazing how much adding, you know, a good music cue or the right sound effect yeah. makes, improves game feel. Like people will report different experiences subjectively of the visuals yeah. if the right audio is in there, right? So for me, it was like often getting this thing that sounded, that had no sound or some crummy placeholder sounds. And then you put in like the, the for real stuff. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden it's just like, oh my God, like that it just feels so good. Yeah. Um, so like those, those moments I really, really enjoy when it's just like something happens that like people on the team get excited. Uh, that's, that's usually like a, a rewarding, you know, you're on the right track. Like, and I'm making my first game right now. So my abilities are like, I'm just making a text adventure. Yep. Um, and what I'm really focusing on right now is, uh, yeah. oh yeah. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, actually, can I grab another one? Yeah, thanks so much. Um, what I'm really loving right now is that uh, my girlfriend, who's not into video games at all, will play my game, and then she'll be like, oh, why is that happening? Oh, like, what's wrong with this character? Oh, and there's a mystery to the game, right? Mm -hmm. And she's so intrigued by it, and I'm like, nice. that's something that I made, right? Like, when I got out of uh, business school, I took marketing. Yeah. Um, I had all this marketing knowledge, but I couldn't make anything. And that was the problem. And so mm -hmm. when I started making games, it's almost like making a building. You look at it and be proud of it. And then when I make a game and somebody plays it, they're like, whoa, that was a lot of fun. I'm like, wow, like I made that. Like That's my child out there, you know? That's so really that's cool. kind of cool. That's kind of yeah, cool you guys and, said uh, that. Yeah, and on what Mike said, I think, um, not to dissuade you being a solo game developer, yeah. but, but I find there are a lot of things that kind of come together where, like, you you can't always do it alone. Like, oh, definitely if, not, yeah. You know, you have, like, artists who are great at art, but they don't know anything about code and, and otherwise, you know, and sound and things like that. There's all these different spheres that kind of come together and... Like I, I like I do definitely like that teamwork aspect where yeah. I mean even today we were talking about putting to, we were putting together a video uh, one of our artists uh, had done this awesome time lapse of him uh, painting a character so he recorded the video but then he was coming to me about video questions but he was also coming to Mike about having some kind of backing track yeah. for it so like all three of us were kind of collaborating on this one thing and when it comes out it's gonna be great uh, but I think individually none of us could have done it alone yeah mm -hmm. oh that's awesome here. So for any beginner game devs that might be listening to this, um, our best teaching experiences is in our failures. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe shed some light on what's been uh, some of the hardest parts about making games and what people can learn from your experiences and your failures. Oh, wow. Uh, good question. I, I mean, I, I would say one thing you can point back to, and you, you may have an, a keen appreciation of this with Marvin's Mittens, is if you really want to do this professionally, if you want to do this as a business, you really do have to spend like... I don't know if you have to spend actually half your time on the business side, mm -hmm. but you do have to consider marketing your game, you know, getting people playing it, getting out there. Um, that's, you know, like just this, this whole side of, of networking and showing it off and getting people interested yeah. in your game is, is, a big, is a big thing that I don't even think we're particularly bad at, but I think that's part of our success, you know, is yeah. that we actually did get the game in front of people. Um, what, one thing that I've noticed that never, I find really, really interesting and it didn't come up for a game like Star Wall as much because it's this sort of uh, multiplayer thing where, you know, what matters is your opponent. Mm -hmm. But with anything where you're worried about difficulty, uh, one of the biggest holes that you see in so many games is uh, they didn't get enough people to try it beforehand. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And tuning, you really lose your sense of how hard something is to do in a game. Sure. If you're playing it all the time, you, you get way better than you think you are at your own game. Yeah, it's so, so true. So that's yeah. something I find... I'm always fighting, and, and I think Jan and I both probably is doing on the content development side. You're building levels, and you're just like, yeah, I made this cool level, and this sweet sequence of things happens, and you, you put it in front of players, and you find out, like, oh, like, the, the second jump I'm asking them to do is just, like, impossible yes. for a player in that skill level. So, like, yeah. Um, so, yeah, tuning tuning difficulty is one of the big ones, I would say. Nice. Nice. Um, yeah, I know, it's a tough question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think, yeah, one of them, and kind of touching on what Mike said there, is that, like, you have to wear so many different hats. It's like, um, I remember somebody gave a talk once. It was basically, like, it was called, like, I just want to make games. So it's not just about you, you know, sitting at your computer making the game, and then you put it out there. It's like, okay, well, do you want a website for your game? Okay, now you're a web developer and a yeah. game designer and a programmer and an animator. Oh, and do you want a trailer? Well, now you're a video editor. And do you want to talk to people? Well, now you have to do PR. Like, yeah, you really uh, have to do you do want it to all. go out of town to show your game somewhere? Well, now you're a travel agent. You know, like <laughs> you have to you have to do all these different things um, in order for a game to be successful. And I think uh, a lot of people don't don't expect that, uh, yeah. or don't, or maybe even don't appreciate it, how much it goes on behind the scenes. 
Um, but yeah, it's always it's always hard. Um, <laughs> not sure. That's kind of what stands out to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, that's perfect. So a little more positive note. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Your game is Pizza Titan Ultra. Uh, I got to play it a bit at the Capital Gaming Expo, and then this weekend at Comic Con. Uh, but for anyone who has never seen or heard anything about Pizza Titan Ultra, maybe explain what the game is a little bit for the listeners. Yeah, uh, so it's a game where you are uh, a 10-story mech with a pizzeria in your chest. So you're crashing through the city to deliver pizza. I didn't even realize um, it was in your chest. The pizza yeah, was actually in yeah, your chest. Yeah, so when you go to realize can, that. It's, it's a totally modular mech, so you can basically pull off arms and legs and head and rebuild it from the ground up and give it a new paint job but you do see in the zoomed in view you literally have like the little awning uh, and like the doors and the windows of a pizzeria no like, way, Ma and awesome. pizza shop is like right there in the chest um, so it's sort of our it's an intersection of you know the, the ideas we had were let's do something grounded that people get you know something that reflects your daily experience and that's where pizza delivery came up but some other people on the team kept saying like I want to do something like just big and kind of you know like just awesome feeling and yeah. like explosive action rolls and jetpacks and lasers um, and, and mecha kept coming up just as a sort of genre and then eventually we landed on let's do both and yeah. so we have this this crazy hybrid uh, like we sort of landed on the concept before we had the gameplay too so it, it took us a while to really find the perfect blend I think we're, we're still getting to the perfect yeah. blend but of kind of insane giant robot action but also it's, it's almost a bit of a racing game it's a bit of a race the clock so it's sort of a, a racer, runner, slash brawler kind of yeah, thing. It, yeah. it, it's it's really sort of its own mix of genres that I haven't quite seen done like this. I guess it's mostly an action platformer, um, but it's got these other elements uh, trying to reflect what it is with the pizza delivery. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Jan, I don't know. What do you uh, said? Mm. Anything you'd add to the summary? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's pretty accurate. Yeah. The way yeah. I the way I describe it to people, and I talked to you about this at Comic Con, and I think CGX too. Is this like Simpsons Road Rage if you were in like a Gundam wing? <laughs> you know awesome. what I mean? Like, and yeah. so and this is the highest compliment too because Simpsons Road Rage was like my favorite GameCube game of all time. Nice, like, and yeah. it's just like really colorful. You get from A to B in a time limit, and tr- and you like have so much chaos in between and stuff. Yeah. So and you t- and you were talking about it a little bit um, there, but I was gonna ask you like, where did the concept of Pizza Titan Ultra even come from? I know there was a story of like. Somebody wanted to make like a skateboarding game delivering pizzas, but then other right. people wanted to make a mech game, and you're like, let's mm. let's combine or something like that. Yeah, and that that's really it. Is we were kind of trying to figure out what what to do. What did we want to? Because I mean, in our experience, we'd made Marvin's Mittens, which was like a, a platformer, a very zen, soft, feel good platformer. Yeah. Um, but very single player focused. Then we had this totally insane, you know, uh, narwhal space combat competi- local competitive game, um, just totally different things. And, you know, we were kind of asking the question, like, where where do we want to go from here? Like, what do we want to build next? And we kind of felt like we were drifting towards single player again. Um, but but we knew we did pretty well with, you know, just insane, wacky idea. And yeah. uh, it, it, we, we spent a while debating what to do. We actually started making kind of a, it was a very different tone of game. It was almost like a, a, a block-based, like a la Minecraft sort yeah. of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, game about satellite repair up in space like we we're building it was this world of modular cubes mm. that we we're building the satellite with and that a lot of the the tech a lot of the engine there and everything sort of became what is pizza titan ultra but it was a very different tone and it wasn't quite as as insane um quite as manic and quite as action focused yeah um so we kind of just found our way into that i don't know mm. like yeah yeah, and speaking of, like, manic and action focus, so, like, I just talked about Simpsons Road Rage. Yeah. And the thing I love about this is, like, kind of all the chaos in the game. And mm-hmm. I, it's honestly a similarity that I saw with even Star Wall, is that uh, the game is almost, like, very chaotic. You're these, like, narwhals in space, and you're trying to control a narwhal and trying to stab each other in the heart. It doesn't make sense, but it makes sense. And maybe you can, like, maybe you can discuss this a little more as the level designer, but, like, in the end, like, how do you, contr- like, how do you have a game that's so chaotic but have it still make sense at the same time? Mm. Well, I was just clarify, Mike, Mike has done a lot of levels, actually. Um, but, yeah, I think, um, honestly, a lot of it came out about in testing, just getting people to play it, kind of like we were saying before. Like, um, we, we, and the other part is that we're still kind of figuring it out. But um, but basically, yeah, I mean, you, you have a certain amount of actions. Like, the mech is super agile, uh, but it still feels really weighty. So basically, yeah. you're running around... Um, you can jump, you can hover, you can punch stuff, you can kick stuff. 
Uh, so a lot of it is just kind of finding the rhythm. Like you're running one way, and then you have these kind of like this like high low game of like oh helicopters are in the air, so you hit X, and then you have guys on the ground, so you hit Y, and um, a lot of it is just kind of you keep playing through and then you realize like oh I'm low on energy so we're gonna have to place like an energy refill station here and there and there's there's basically a lot of uh, elements that kind of feed off each other like if you play any kind of um, game like a Diablo like you know the concept yeah. of like builders and spenders yeah there's kind of yeah it's like all that kind of stuff is is relevant uh, when you're putting together a level for sure yeah um, but yeah I think a lot of it is just and uh, yeah, a lot of it is just kind of playing it out and testing it out, and then hoping that people <laughs> understand do, what's happening. Yeah, yeah, understand what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's all. It also sort of starts even before a level's built. A lot of it is built into systems in the game. Mm -hmm. So it's it's um, you know like the, we've been we've been making the levels increasingly chaotic, and I'm really happy people can play them. Yeah. Uh, so our current demo level that we've been bringing to to the cons. Um, I, I, at Capital Gaming Expo and Comic Con, uh, we also brought it down to Pack South in San Antonio. Oh, nice. um, and and the the demo levels, we've been ratcheting up the chaos, and I'm really pleased that people can still play because yeah. because it's more fun when you feel like you're this giant robot surviving just this onslaught of like yeah, enemy oh, helicopters yeah. and tanks are firing. But but a big thing to do, and this comes down to the design of the enemies and their projectiles and their sounds, is kind of trying to weight things appropriately. So it's a question of like, okay, here's there is it's got a, we we did ratchet up the size of the basic enemy sort of machine gun pew pew la like yeah. little tiny lasers, but they're still pretty small. So they're they're brightly colored. You can sort of see them. You can dodge them. It almost yeah. doesn't matter if it, I, I know that you. when I was playing and I'd yeah. see that, I'd yeah. start panicking. I'm like, oh god, kill <laughs> right, everything right, right, right. and like run away or but something. It's, yeah. But it's a question of creating a, a more of a sense of urgency and panic with those than an actual threat necessarily. Yeah. If you eat enough of that, just basic laser fire, you you'll you'll get taken out for yeah. sure. But at the same time, we have these homing missiles, and we just did pass after pass of homing missile. Okay, Jan, add more. Like Jan's doing all the, the awesome VFX work. So yes. like bigger smoke, bigger trail. Um, let's make the projectile a brighter color. I wanted them to be like these sleek black military missiles, and and I was talked out of that because when they're white and red, they they pop from everything, right? They yeah. have this really bright color scheme, so you can really see this huge smoke trail. And then we added a sound and an icon on top. So it's if something is killing players like like crazy. They have to know what that is, right? Yeah. Like it, it's it's gets back to like Halo. Like Bungie used to give these great uh, talks online about like about just this. The the sweet spot is when your game when when a player, you know, they die, they lose, but they know why. Right? Yes, and because so, when I get killed, like yeah. I'm playing through Borderlands, and right. sometimes I'll be standing there, something will just explode, and I die, and right. I get so mad. I'm like, what? What? There's nothing around me. Like, what yeah. just killed me? It doesn't yeah, make any yeah. sense. Yeah, and Borderlands is fast and has that just like tons of stuff happening yeah. all the time, right? Right, right? So it's that chaos, but if something really big is gonna, you know, take out half your health suddenly, it needs an extraordinary kind of tell. Like it needs something to warn the player. Yeah, totally and, and you know, it can still hit you, but like give you a chance to react. So at least on some level you're like, well, I did see, you know, the ground shaking and, and this yeah. giant dust cloud, so this drill mech was coming up out of the ground. Yeah. Uh, and it's like this, you know, this five-story drill popping up. That's going to hurt, you know? Yeah. So the, the player, maybe it kills in the first few times, but you learn quickly what, amidst all that chaos, you can still... We're trying to get it so you can prioritize. Prioritize your targets and your en enemies and what's incoming at you yeah. so that you can that still was, figure uh, it out. That was actually one thing, too, that, like, when, when you had uh, ratcheted up the number of enemies there, Mike, uh, mm. uh, I, there was a lot of people, actually, even on the team, who were... Who suddenly started making comments that it kind of reminded them of bullet hell games? Yeah, and like that wasn't something that we had before. Like before, it was almost like more rhythm based, like where you got into a flow of like punch that, kick that, jump this. But then uh, when the chaos started happening, and then like all the guys are firing stuff at you, and we made the projectiles really obvious, then people were like, "Oh, it's actually now kind of like a bullet hell," and like that's yeah. really cool. So. It was, Almost like a happy accident in a way. Nice. Yeah, that, that's I awesome. mean, we did spend a whole, like we will sometimes have meetings where, where the the three of us who are there in the office all day are, are uh, just like literally spending most of a day just okay. The base enemy infantry. What if we added a fourth projectile? No, back down to three, four. Okay, what if the burst like was a little tighter, so it's a little more controlled? All right, let's add more spread. Okay, what if we up the damage a bit? No, that feels too bad. You know, like yeah, I don't always think of us as being super perfectionists, but we do spend no, a like, lot of time tuning yeah. these little things. Because like the feedback system is probably one of the most important parts of like game design in general, like game design theory. So like the mm -hmm. fact that you're spending so much time on it, I think is like really helpful for gamers and 
I think they're going to enjoy your game more for having that. Especially in a super chaotic game, you want to know what's going on. That's right. So you yeah. need that feedback system to understand what's actually happening and contemplate what's actually going on. Yeah. And strategize right. around it. So, no, I absolutely, yeah. That's, and and that's we great. did have similar discussions. You, you did mention, you know, Starwall visually was, was pretty noisy, lots of, at least lots of color, lots going on. And we had similar discussions because we, we added like rainbow sparkles coming up from behind them. And I remember like a big conversation, a big debate yeah. of how much rainbow sparkle is too much rainbow sparkle, <laughs> you know, because at a certain point you can't see the tip of your tusk or the, the heart that you're going for. And those things have to read crystal like super clear at all times. That needs yeah. to be like the name of your autobiography. Like <laughs> yeah. how much crystal how much sparkle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That'd be so amazing. And then it touches on my next question is like another similarity that I saw between Starwall and Pizza Titan Ultra is like the visuals and specifically the bright colors that you use. Yep. Um, and so when I actually was walking by Pizza Titan Ultra at CGX, I had actually never heard of you guys before CGX, okay. but I saw the bright colors from Pizza Titan Ultra, and I was like, I have to sit down and try that game. And so nice. I sat down just for the colors. So like, maybe can you explain like, like the the visual and the artistic direction and the use of bright colors a little bit? Yeah, uh, Jan, I don't know if you want to talk about that. A bit. Um, like, it's a little bit more ad hoc actually, than a high level. Yeah, direction. no, it, it kind of just ended up there. Like, mm. um, like um, as Mike mentioned earlier, we were working on a, on a different game at first. Uh, it was all based in space, and, and actually that game was. A lot more kind of cold and gray looking. Yeah. Um, but but then once we just yeah once we changed the game Pizza Titan and then we knew it was going to be in cities we knew there was going to be lots of buildings we were going to have colors and stuff like that trees and things and, and things like that um, and it was yeah it was just something that kind of came together I guess um, actually especially recently because before. You know, we really amped up the color. We, we kind of learned more about like kind of color correction, color grading, and things like that. But yeah. uh, I, you know, I mean, we were working on it for a while, and we were just kind of putting together all these city assets. And then at one point, we were playing with stuff, and we found this like this uh, tune shader that you could put on things. And we put it on the mech and the enemies, and it looked amazing. We're like, wait, this is like even before like, the concept was kind of like we want to have a cast of characters that resembles kind of like a Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah, and then we well, found perfect, a yeah. way of actually making the game look like that, and we're like. Okay, this is awesome. Like, like we want this to look like a cartoon. Like, let's just blast the colors. You yeah. know? Oh, that's um, perfect. Yeah. Because yeah. like, I'm I'm really weird. Like, I'm 26 and I still watch like Pokemon on Netflix and stuff. Oh, yeah. Nice. Because of the bright colors, though. Like, I'll be working, but I'll have Pokemon in the background because of the bright colors. Mm -hmm. And like, I love Stardew Valley, one of my favorite games of all time. Borderlands is another one. Pizza Titan Ultra. The colors itself attracted me to it. Um, there was another game at CGX too. It was called King of the Hat, I think, which was like a super fun game. Brightly colored. I don't know what it is about like bright colors, but they just like they get your brain like going and get you engaged. So like, yeah, I just love the colors. That's why I asked the question. With Pizza Titan Ultra. So yeah, it's you know it's a bit of a departure from like we've in the past kind of made fun of like you know the, the brown shooter that is the ubiquitous yeah. kind of experience yeah. now. Um, I guess there's something there's a sort of self seriousness that a lot of games have. Um, and we just know we want to be more lighthearted and fun than that. Yeah. Like, we like a lot of Nintendo games. We like doing kind of wacky things. Um, you know, everyone on the team has would have very different lists of their, their favorite games, kind yeah. of. Um, but the intersection of, of all our interests seems to really be these kind of just insane things. Yeah. Um, so it just kind of fits in with what we're trying to do. Uh, try yeah. to be funny, try to be fun. And, and even, uh, actually, that was one of my favorite comments we got when we were at PAX South. We met um, Angry Joe, who I love on YouTube. I've watched like, so many of his videos. Uh, he came up and, and he said that the game really caught his eye because he loves mech games. Yeah. But what he was saying that drew, drew him to this one was that it was a mech game that was actually colorful and that didn't take itself seriously. And I think the color actually kind of helps sell that. Like, like this, is not, you know, this is not your typical mech game uh, yeah. or, or any game for that matter. <laughs> Like, game. And I was going to say that it's so funny because that touches on my exact next question. So there's a ton of humor in your games, even between Starwall and between Pizza Titan Ultra. Um, I think I played one level where your boss was Bob Ross. Say that. Say Rob, that. Rob Boss. Rob Boss. Sorry. Is, is <laughs> say that five times fast. Yeah, my yeah, boss yeah. is Bob Ross. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> the games, the games definitely don't take itself too seriously. So how important is it to inject that sense of humor into your games? And where and where does that sense of humor even come from? Uh, we just, yeah, well, we like doing humorous stuff. I mean, for me, it's something I've been trying to do ever since. One of the first games I got to work on professionally after school uh, was a third-person action game on the original Xbox called Raises Hell. Nice. And uh, it was this crazy thing where you were this kind of monster killing these sort of weird plastic Disney cute things. Yeah. Um, and it was this army of, of ridiculous cute things. And I was given a lot of, uh, a lot of room to kind of just play around. And we, again, this is, this is when we were, I was 
looking a lot at, at what Halo was doing, and we heard about their 5,000 lines of dialogue or whatever it was that they had for the Marines. And I said, you know, like, we can make these pretty inexpensively in-house. It could just be me and some friends pitched up so that we sound yeah. like ridiculous cartoon characters. And I, I remember people on the team who I respected and certainly taught me a lot about audio and design and all the rest saying, like, you know, this stuff you put in really helped the game. Yeah. Like, it really took it, really made it a lot funnier to play and just made the world deeper. And so I always try to put in, like, silly dialogue or lines or just that, that goofy character is something we can inject... And you know you're 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 not actually trying to be the next Call of Duty or Assassin's Creed. You're not you're not competing directly with AAA. Yeah. You're providing a different kind of lighthearted experience as soon as you do that. Yeah. So it's a way of providing a different form of entertainment. Uh, sort of. So you're differentiating yourself. And uh, you know, we are pretty funny. Like just the group we work with is just a hilarious group. So. I always say that the, the video game industry right now is very like DC and it's very dark and. Right. Whatever, right. and then sometimes you get these Marvel games like yeah. Pizza Time yeah. Ultra, and you're like, it's such a breath of fresh air. It's exactly why I bought Stardew Valley because right. it was colorful. It's like relaxing. The soundtrack's very relaxing. It's just like I was like, I, I just need that niche, and like I think Pizza Titan Ultra really like hits that niche, which is kind of cool. And I, yeah. I like the self serious, you know, dark gritty games too. Yeah. I just think there's room for other things, yeah. and that's that's where we're trying to live. So, yeah. Yeah. like Bioshock is one of my favorite games of all time, yeah. and like there's no better game that sets an ambiance and like has that kind of story and stuff. And it is dark, but like at the same time, it's still kind of like cartoony. Like the I was going to say, it. Bioshock's an interesting example because it does have some dialogue that's darkly funny. You yeah, know, like exactly. and, and I yeah. guess that's something else that I I personally really reach for. Um, and I'm doing the one, like, entering the, the text. So by default, technically writing the lines. We spend a lot of time uh, instant messaging the, between the group or just, you know, sort of talking about these characters as, as our, our awesome artist, Vanny, uh, draws them. You know, what what would this one say? You yeah. know, and we, we, we kind of jam on a lot of these ideas a lot. But then when I'm putting it in, one of the things that I'm really keen on is, uh, and this comes to something I read a long time ago about, like, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which is that it's it's a preposterous world but the characters in it take themselves seriously. So this is something I'm always shooting for, where it's even though it is surface level completely insane and makes no sense at all, trying to have a certain logic, like just that extra little bit of depth where the characters actually, they care if their mech, yeah. if, if their pizza gets delivered, if their mech gets damaged. Oh um, and I think that gives it a little bit of, just a little bit more heart and soul yeah. than, than just ridiculous. So they're ridiculous jokes and it's all these crazy pop culture references, but then I always try to, we have our, our cast of characters that I, care maybe inordinately about you know like but but i do really like these characters and and i have a sense of who they are and what they will do and so how they react to all this just wackiness is still very earnest in, in a way yeah. so that's so great that the, the the world is ridiculous but the characters inside that world take themselves seriously yeah yeah that's like a super good piece of advice like as a beginner game developer right. i've never really like thought of it that way and that's like amazing so so glad you said that. That's awesome. <laughs> Cheers. So, <laughs> so you've shown off Pizza Titan Ultra at CGX and now at Comic Con this past weekend. How has the reception for the game been so far? Uh, very good. I yeah. think yeah, um, it was great. It, it, you saw all kinds of people, um, younger, older, coming by, having fun with the game. Like, um, kind of touching on what I was saying before, like a lot of laughs and, and people just having a good time. Yeah. Um, it, and uh, yeah, reception really good. Um, I think. The more we demo, the more we try new things. Like, um, you know, the game now compared to where it was even just a couple months ago, like you can you can really see people getting it a lot yeah. more, and, and just things are clearer that maybe weren't as clear before. So I think uh, we're we're definitely on the right track, and uh, we're we're hoping it will do pretty well. Yeah, it's, awesome. <laughs> it's always the hope. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, you never know. It is it is crazy how much you learn bringing it out to stuff because uh, you know you sort of think, oh well, it's it's about the promotional aspect, bringing it to conventions, etc. But, but really, if, if you get to watch someone, like as I sort of alluded to earlier, get to watch someone play your game when it's just people internally playing your game, you learn so much. And I had a really funny moment the other day. Uh, I, was, I think I was talking to Jason. Yon wasn't there just at that moment. But uh, where I was saying, you know, I... You know, we put in this pizza mini game, so you actually make pizzas. Yeah. And I was like, well, yeah, it seems to mostly work. I don't know if we really learned that much about how it works. People, we got a smile, we got a laugh. But then I sat down and actually started writing out, like, okay, so based on watching, you know, several dozen people play the pizza mini game, we should probably move this cursor, change this line, refine the feedback system, yeah. Yeah. change the scoring. It's too, it's too unforgiving when we drop toppings. And there was like like two dozen points of feedback that we yeah. had as like it's amazing how implement immediately yeah. kind of yeah. feedback uh, just having watched uh, you know that many people running through the game yeah. um, right. 
Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So we're going to calm down on the Pizza Titan Ultra stuff for a little bit. Okay, sure. Um, I have a, I, we're going to talk about Star Wall. Um, I have a question on Twitter. So this is, comes from the Irrelevant Hero. Uh, you can follow him at, at Irrelevant underscore Hero. Um, I think he's a YouTuber, and he YouTubes on RetroBit Gaming. And he asks, how did you guys come up with such a ridiculously awesome concept, and why can't I put it down? That's about Star Wall. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what did the concept for Star Wall even come up with? Uh, well, I don't know if we mentioned it here, but uh, Star Wall originally was made at a game jam, so it's basically like a 48-hour competition to try to make a game in a weekend. Yeah, uh, highly recommend uh, anybody interested in game dev try those out. You'll you'll learn a lot, and uh, and having that that crunch uh, of the deadline uh, really makes you kind of put put stuff out quickly. Yeah. Um, and the Ottawa game jam is coming up, eh? Soon in June, that's I think. Right. Yep. Yeah. 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 Jam coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was something we were working on. I remember that one, we, we had all sat down as a group talking about what we were doing. And, and uh, so every year they give you a theme. And the theme of that year was just, it was an audio clip of a heart beating. Oh, no so way. It's just okay. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, okay, well, so what does that the mean? Is from? it hard? Like some people came up with the game, like a very literal implementations of hearts. Some people were trying to do things about like, like death and things like that. And there was like some weird snake game too. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we were talking about it and we were we kind of we were just talking about it for a couple hours actually and and we decided we wanted to have something where like you're kind of hitting the heart we were talking about jousting yep um and then we were and at first at one point it was going to be like old people in armor or old something. knights old knights yeah right because it we we interpreted the, the heartbeat as age yeah related. but then uh then we were kind of changing to unicorns and we decided they would be too hard to animate within a 48 hour period yeah so we're like well, what about narwhals? Because that's basically a unicorn without the legs so that you don't have to animate. It's the unicorn of the sea. Yes. So I, yeah. I actually had a cold and I went home at a reasonable person's bedtime <laughs> that particular Saturday and Saturday night, I think it was, and things were humming along pretty merrily. And I, I knew it was like physics, physics-based sort of flaccid, weird gameplay, yeah. and there's going to be heart poking. But I got these this series of text messages, and I remember sort of waking up because my phone buzzed at like three in the morning and looking over. And reading, they're narwhals now. <laughs> and then, and then a second message came in saying, "And it's in space." <laughs> yes. So it's the kind of thing you're like, like sold. Right? Yeah, it was, like, yeah. Yes. And I'm like, I can't wait to go in tomorrow yeah. morning and got up super early and like marched in there. Yeah, but it was, amazing. it was yeah. the kind of decision that gets made when you're trying to make a game in 48 hours yeah, and it's the middle of the night and everyone's exhausted. Yeah, a lot of people have asked us if we were taking some kind of drugs, but it was just sleep <laughs> deprivation. <laughs> and I've seen that a lot with uh, Pizza Titan and Ultra. People are just like, I'm mech that delivers pizzas throughout the city, sold. Like, absolutely. Just take my money. I've seen that a lot on Twitter and stuff, so. Nice. You guys are going to come up with these concepts that are just like, yes, like, I've needed that in my life and didn't know it until you said it, so. That's kind of amazing. Thanks. So, yeah. <laughs> So Star Wall has been watched like millions of times on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, would you say that you guys have found success in game development, and how would you guys define success for yourselves? Well, I'd, I'd say we've been pretty successful just based on the fact that what started as a bunch of friends doing stuff for a hobby can now actually make that a full-time job. Yeah. Um, so for me, that's a pretty awesome benchmark. If we can do this sustainably and keep making games on our own Steam, uh, that's that's a pretty that's a that's a win I think for everyone involved. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it's. I mean, in terms of the uh, the number of views, just people watching it, um, and all the, the content creators, um, you know, that's that's definitely. I, I don't know if I've ever considered that success or not. Certainly, it's nice to have you know, like your game seen by all those people. Uh, I always hope people will play it, but those that is, I really view the content creators now as the the. Like pretty much singular path to success as an indie. Um, that's basically how you compete with giant publishers who have huge marketing budgets. Is you make something that's interesting enough and refined and fun enough to play that these you know people get it, want to play it. Yeah. And that, that's another you know that's, that didn't inform our decision to go with humor in all these cases, but it certainly hasn't hurt us, right? Yeah, we're, we're making these crazy things. And then we know how to make a fun enough game that it actually kind of delivers the gameplay. Yeah. Um, and between those two things, we, you know, certainly Starwall 
that was huge for us. Achievement Hunter brought down our, our website. Um, you know, like we've had all sorts of great let's plays and yeah. hilarious people. They are fun to watch. We watch a lot of them. Even Marvin's Mittens, I I watched a lot of long let's plays of the game just to watch people play and enjoy your game. Getting back to what Jan was saying, but it's yeah. really fun to watch people have fun with it. So. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Did you ever watch that uh, the German guy? I watched. Let's I watched the whole Marvin's one, like Mittens? the whole whatever uh, several hours of some guy yeah. talking in German, occasional English words, and I just watched him play our whole game because I'm like, this is awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I remember that one too because there's a really cool moment in the game where you basically go up into the sky, and I just remember that guy. He was like, he didn't know what was happening, and I couldn't understand him at all. But he starts floating up into the clouds, and he's like, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and actually, my my favorite, I, I, it wasn't it wasn't quite that moment. It was uh, there was a big mountain nearby too, and it actually had the same music we had used in our trailer, and some combination of English words. Mm. I I immediately understood watching him play that he recognized the music from the trailer as the music in that area. Oh, nice. And as the guy who wrote the music, I was specifically very pleased yeah, that no, it was like, awesome. oh, he remembered the trailer <laughs> music and that's knew so it was good. yeah yeah that cool. was kind of cool. So what's next then for Breakfall? What's next for Pizza Titan Ultra? Uh, I mean, Pizza Titan Ultra is what's next for Breakfall. What's next for yeah. Breakfall? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what's next? I guess. Yeah, uh, I know we we have spent some time talking about that. Um, I think we want to kind of just spend some time trying out some weird ideas. Yeah. Uh, after this, like you know, put, put Pizza Titan out there, of course, and uh, maybe in a way, kind of try to tap into. A, how Star Wars was made, where it was just like you know, came out of a very small thing. So, so there's been a lot of talk about trying to do prototypes. Um, that that's one thing uh, for anybody getting into game dev. Definitely prototypes help a lot. But it, as we've discussed uh, for many hours at HQ, they're not the end all be all. Yeah. Um, like you can't you can't always base a game on a prototype, but a lot of times it can help you to see if it's going in an interesting direction. Um, so I think I think we're gonna try that out. Um, I mean, we don't really have super solid plans but the honest truth is that it was pretty hard to figure out what to do next after Starwall I think yeah, in some yeah. ways um, there was there was a little bit of a, a burden of, of some amount of success was we were kind of like oh wow we have money but that means we're actually spending our hard earned money to fund yeah. development for the next thing <laughs> what's it going to be and how are we going to make our money back and you know there's, there's was a little bit of a well now we're running a business but also just like we made something people really liked and it was just this concept that clicked right away and people loved it how will we know when we found one of those? Yeah. And we kind of landed mm. on something that we thought, well, maybe we could make this, and then eventually, you know, everything came together for a giant robot pizza delivery. But it was honestly a bit hard to get there, and I don't know how we arrived at it, and I don't know how we'll arrive at the next thing either. Uh, one thing I think, directly speaking to what Jan was saying about prototypes, is I think we'd like to figure out a gameplay prototype and base the game off that, probably. Yeah. Because with Pizza Titan Ultra, we, we had a game we were working on, then came up with this insane thing, and everyone everyone laughed. You know, that was that was we're like, okay, that's awesome. That's a yeah. game we all we, we basically we were making that game because the, the, all the people who react who who are saying like, I need to play that. That was our own kind of internal sense. Yeah. It's like that, yeah, that needs to exist. It needs to be. Yeah, but it but made. it was hard to figure out what exactly it was because yeah. you know we had this idea of oh it's an action game and you're in a mech, but like how much is it racing the clock? How much of it is fighting evil robots? Like what what is the alchemy that'll make that work? Yeah. Um, and it's a pretty complicated game. It's not the kind of game you could necessarily prototype um, and, and have it fun right away. It needs all these crazy enemies and all these other things. So yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know where we'll head next, but probably something else kind of crazy. But even then, occasionally we come back to like back to the Marvin thing, where Marvin was was pretty lighthearted and had some characters that spoke in crazy gibberish. Like I think it made people smile, if not laugh out loud. But we may also do something more zen, kind of experiential. Like nothing's yeah, really yeah. off the table yet. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we're doing pretty well with the zany, and that's where all of us agree. But I think we might even consider doing something artsy and weird too yeah I think, cool. I think it depends on like what you want to do like cause I, I, I was just gonna I was just thinking about what you were saying and like and, and what I just said about prototypes but something like Marvin's Mittens which we made which was you know the game that brought our team together it, it was not based on a prototype at all it was actually based more on like ideas and emotions and concepts and then the game came after whereas Star Wars, I would almost say is the opposite where the gameplay came first yep. and then it got fleshed out um, and so I think it really depends on what kind of game you're making. Like, if yeah. you want to make something more gameplay focused, or in your case, uh, you know, for like a text adventure, like you just need a solid story. You need like that mystery, as you were saying. Uh, so, that, yeah, I think it's gonna 
We're going to have to think about that a lot. Yeah. But Do you guys have like a release date in mind for Pizza Day in Altro right now? Are you guys like working towards that? Or? Not a hard date. We yeah. want to be out on PC in the fall. Cool. Um, so that's that's kind of our, our goal. Uh, it's pretty rough and a lot of things can happen between now and then. I won't say we're behind schedule and I won't say it would be my fault if we were. <laughs> but uh, if we were waiting on audio and levels to get done <laughs> for a little longer. Uh, we're also trying, you know, we're talking to potentially look at some publishers. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's a lot of things. The game is, you know, we're all pretty happy that it's coming together now. Uh, but it's it's far and away the biggest thing we've done. So getting something this big finished and out the door is there's a lot of uh, a lot of mystery there. Cool. They, that's awesome. Yeah. So did you want, guys want to tell the listeners where they can follow you guys personally, either on Twitter or Instagram, or how they can keep in touch with uh, Breakfall and follow what's going on with them? Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, at Team Breakfall, T E A M B R E A K F A L L is our Twitter handle, um, and we're promoting Pizza Titan Ultra a lot there. If you go there, we, it links to our site, but it is pizzatitanultra.com. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm at Mike O'Keo, uh, so that's Mike O K E O G H. But I don't use Twitter much, so yeah, okay. Breakfalls. <laughs> I, I spend more time on the Breakfall account than on my own. Cool. So, uh, Jan, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, no, I'm kind of in a similar yeah. boat. Uh, yeah, Breakfall and uh, uh, Peace Titan. Um, I'm not much for Twitter, but if anybody wants to see my random Snapchats, uh, it's just <laughs> it's Jan Kozlowski. So it's J A N K O Z L O W S K I. Uh, on Snapchat, and you'll see a lot of stuff about uh, Magic Gathering and <laughs> random things that happen. <laughs> Perfect. So, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for sitting down and chatting with me. Uh, big thank you to Moose McGuire's for hosting us. It was an absolute pleasure. Uh, for our listeners, you can check out more information on Pizza Titan Ultra at pizzatitanultra.com. Or if you want to follow the team at Breakfall, you can visit breakfall.ca. For more information on them, thanks again, guys. I'm Tyler MV for the Game Savvy Podcast. It's been a slice. Ha! Ah. That's a nice. pizza joke. I'm yeah. so sorry for that. Yeah. I appreciate <laughs> you. <laughs> See you guys later. Thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate having your attention. If you'd like to talk more about video games with me, go follow me on Twitter at Game Savvy. Always happy to connect with some fellow gamers. I also have a Patreon set up. If you'd like to support me, please head to patreon.com slash TylerMV where I'll be updating you on uh, games I'm releasing, podcasts coming out, blog posts, YouTube videos, and whatever other content I'm creating for you. Thanks again for listening, and we'll talk next time.